Hello, it's me Shiny Magneton. You've all heard of democracy, maybe, so today I will be showing you how to make one in Minecraft. I actually once started a democratic revolution in a Minecraft server. I built a parliament, made political parties, and because people wanted to join our faction due to the democratic reforms, we conquered half of the known world, I would go into more detail but it's a long story, anyway let's start the video now. Every functioning democracy has at least two main political parties, that is the minimum for a modern democracy, on the other hand, there is no maximum number of parties, you can choose whether you want a two-party system, or a coalition government. An example of a two-party system is the United States, having the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, but, there are smaller parties in the US, just nobody votes for them, an example of a coalition government is Germany, who recently had their elections, their main parties are the Social Democratic Party, Christian Democratic Union, the Greens, Free Democratic Party, Alternative for Germany, and the Left. In my opinion, the more people on your server, the more parties you should have, if you have more people, then you need parties that are willing to provide for those working in more specific fields than others, and importantly, the more political leaders, the less of a chance a corrupt one having all the control. And, speaking of corruption. Minimizing corruption is essential for creating a democracy, if you have a lot of corrupt leaders, whoever wins the next election will try to stay in power as long as possible, this is bad for democracy. There should always be a system where anyone can call a referendum to force a political leader to resign. If everybody loves their corrupt leader, maybe this server isn't ideal for a democracy altogether. The overall best way of dealing with corruption is to stop it before it gets out of hand. If you are making your democracy, you need a line that cannot be crossed under any circumstances. Some guidelines are no increasing term limits, no restricting freedom of speech, limit the power of your head of state, etc. If things go wrong, the people could always stage a coup. Speaking of coups, Coups are an important piece to the democracy puzzle. If the government does a bad job of making its citizens happy, the people will revolt and attempt to establish a new government. You always have to remember the number one rule about democracy. Keep the people happy. If you keep the people happy, nobody would attempt a coup. But there is an even more important group of people to keep happy. The army. If you have the army on your side, all attempted coups will fail. If the army joins the coup, you can't really fight back. The army is a part of the most patriotic group in your country. Speaking of patriotism. Political participation is very important for democracy. If people just don't care about authority, anarchy will follow. Generally speaking, politicians aren't fans of anarchy. To get people to vote on things, you need campaigns that everybody hears about. If a farmer far away from the capital city can't know anything about an election, they won't vote in one. Another important aspect is to make sure your citizens know that if you don't vote for blank, there will be terrible consequences. Ensure that you have a balance between nobody cares and if you don't vote correctly you'll die. You can't make things too radical. If you're switching from bald Italian man to I must crush capitalism every election something's wrong. Another way to increase political participation partially to the penumbral places particularly proportioned to the peculiarly puny populations of people is to incentivize voting. If people get a small reward for voting in an election, they are more likely to vote. It might incentivize a rural voter to come to their nearest voting booth. Speaking of rural voters. Before voting, you need to know how to collect your votes. Are you going to have a bunch of local elections that all merge together, are you going to have a bigger nationwide election? Local elections strung together tend to be less accurate, but it gives the people a feeling of power that they can influence their local regions, so more voters show up. Nationwide elections have the reverse, more accuracy, but less voters. Another key element of democracy are smaller elections, such as mayoral or regional elections. Mayoral and regional elections are important because less people are voting on it, so the people get more power from one vote without sacrificing any accuracy, and it may get non-voters to become voters in a bigger election. Going back to voting systems, there's multiple ways to have the citizens vote. You could have a traditional voting system, which is picking the candidate you like the most, but there's other ways such as elimination voting, which is getting people to vote out each candidate one by one in several rounds of voting. There's also the option of asking citizens to rank the candidates round by round and then giving points based on which candidate gets first, second or third. They all have their pros and cons, so I don't have a definitive answer for you. Just remember that this is Minecraft, not real life. Some things might not work as intended. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it.
Like and subscribe if you want. Bye.